Hi. Uh, welcome to, like, not my normal show. Um, usually I do a show on here, live on Facebook, um, called The Hippie Report, at The Hippie Report. And that is me doing a kind of a, a, a smoke-out kind of a show, like a community hangout kind of a show um, in Longmont. And the purpose of that is just to, like, provide a little sense of grounding and um but it's a comedy it's a it's a it's to make people laugh and that's not what this is gonna be um so I, i'm not like oh i'm i'm that's the, the creakiest chair i'm sorry um i'm not wearing like a, a flirty little tie or a jacket or anything today um because i'm not trying to be flirty and cute today um I want to talk very seriously about the Black Lives Matter protests. Um, I want to talk about that. It's probably some length. I've got like five real things I want to say about it. Um, but before I say anything, uh, I just really want to point out like um, the very first thing you need to know is you should definitely listen to someone else on this topic. And what I mean is somebody that doesn't like look like this you know what I mean um I can speak to it as like a, a for myself um I'm a white man and um I I have high levels of empathy and caring and kindness and I I that's true and I know that the truth is I don't have full context on this. And so you should definitely listen to someone from that community, not me, on this topic, okay? Totally listen to me if you want to. I feel like I should say something uh, in, a, in a pretty official capacity here. But like, boy, God damn it, listen to somebody else. And, and because like, I care, but I can only like, I, I can only cognize so much of it. And like, I, I'm way behind because I'm, I grew up being me and not being someone else. And I really do believe that I can't see certain parts of it and I and not really qualified to speak much on it in that way. Now, I think that's right. Um, so fucking first things first, listen to somebody else. But, um, so like, I guess the second thing is like, why make a video at all, right? Uh, if I think my, my opinion that is valid because I love people, right? And that's the most important thing. Um, I think that's going to be the spoiler alert. Oh, man, um, I, I'm probably going to make a long video here. So let me just give you the cliff notes uh, in, in case you're a lazy motherfucker and can't stand to listen to someone talk for more than a minute and a half on the goddamn internet. Um, the, I, I believe... And this is, again, I'm going to couch everything. This is just my opinion from somebody who cares. Um, I believe that love fixes this. I really believe that shit. Ooh, I'm going to cry. No, I'm not. <laughs> oh, God. And we're not going to do what we normally do on this show. But I'm, I may cry a little bit. I care about this. I, I believe in love. And I think, I think love fixes this. And I think if you're in love, you'll be a servant. Not so hard. That'll happen with the grind problem. That's not to be disrespectful toward the topic. I know it's a serious topic. I'm not trying to get all baked about it. Can't cry at the fucking first thing I say, fuck. Well, there's your cliff notes, fuckers. Love does fix it, man. I really fucking believe that. Everything else I say is gonna be echoes of that. Love fixes it. If you're in love, uh, you will serve that person. God damn it, it's just, it is that easy. I could stop everything. All right, sorry. Boy, you know what? Hitting that little joint did help me 
pull it together. So I, I don't do that to be disrespectful toward the topic at all. <sighs> so like, why would I even make this video if I think like my opinion is sort of like t optional? <laughs> and, and it is. Um, man, I'm making this video because I just think if I don't speak up about this in all of my capacity that I can, I'll regret that. And you never know, like, you never know what changes somebody's mind. So, recently I've been doing this show, The Hippie Report. It's me getting high and rambling forever. And uh, they've been, uh, they decided to air it on the local TV thing. And so, like, I, I feel a special responsibility to talk about the most important thing that's happened in American history in a long time, the Black Lives Matter movement. Specifically, the protests. I want to talk a lot about that, too. Uh, but I told you my punchline. That's just what I'm going to say. Um, now, let me say it. Um, these protests have been characterized as violent protests. I think I disagree with that. I think I disagree with that because um, our language is really important in this conversation. And I don't think vandalism is violence. I don't think burning a police car is violent at all. In fact, it's extremely vandalous or whatever, you know. It's, uh, uh, it's a very extreme thing to do. Um, and I don't think we ought to just burn every cop car in America. Um, but I'm basically in favor. <laughs> um, I don't believe that should be characterized as violence. I don't think that's right. So that's my first thing. Yes, of course I'm in favor of the protests. I haven't seen the protesters do very much that I disagree with, frankly. Um, so that's the first thing I wanted to say. Vandalism's not violence. It's important we get that right. The violence is the police officers. It's so important to draw that line. Burning a car is not like extinguishing someone's life. It's not the same. Words matter so much. Seems maybe like a silly thing to point out and, and be on the verge of tears, but it's not the same. If you watch our show at all, <laughs> you'll know I'm an easy cry. <clears throat> and I feel big about this. <sighs> Second thing. This is really important. Um, there are agent provocateurs in the crowd. Um, people from racist groups. Um, people from the fucking police. Showing up to fuck shit up. Um... They want to, like, increase the intensity so that they, the police can respond with a bigger response. Um, they're called agent provocateurs. Their job is to go into a crowd and fucking provoke them into doing, trick them almost, into, like, I don't know, busting up some mom-and-pop shop or whatever. It's so hard to know who's doing what because so many people have these masks on and shit and but boy, a lot of them have police boots on. I don't fucking know. And boy, here, let me say some shit before I talk too far out about this. When I talk about the police and shit, yeah, I know that they're a good police, and I love that. I respect public servants. Um, I, I love public servants. I have friends that are politicians and... Um, work at the police, I, I just, I love that, that segment of the population willing to serve. That's going to be the punchline of this whole thing. But, um, and the, here's the thing I really want to say, especially about my community in Longmont. Um, boy, we got, we seem to have a like, pretty good police. You know? 
And, uh, you know, I did a podcast a while ago, uh, a couple years ago, I guess now, um, with the uh, Longmont Public Safety Chief. And dig this, that motherfucker's a good guy. All of our cops wear fucking cameras. Um, they got clinical therapists on staff. I mean, like, they're working hard to, to like, serve the public. So when I talk about the fucking police and shit, the fucking, you know, I'm not necessarily talking about my community. And when I talk about like why it might make sense contextually that a, a protester might start a fire in a police car, even if that wasn't an agent provocateur, like even if that were the, the, the true protesters, I'm kind of loosely in favor of that symbolically. You know, um, I believe that when the officer in question, when that officers, so many have done this, when the officers murder the people they're supposed to protect, <sighs> that officer's wrong, of course murderer. The officers around enabling that are accomplices. Um, every officer that doesn't turn in a dirty cop is a dirty cop to me. Okay? So that's how my morality works. And the officer, when... Boy, when they do this, they are acting on behalf of their communities. That's the job of a police officer. You represent the community. That's what it is. So it becomes the community's responsibility that it happened at all. So, I just want to be careful when I'm talking about the cops. I believe they are good cops. I think I know them. I know some good cops. So, uh, there's a fine line there. Whatever. I know I'm going to get my dick kicked in so much, no matter what I say. <laughs> Oh my God, I'm, you know, I knew I'd be a mess. I'm so glad we're not abiding by our usual rule on the show, which is I have to lose an article of clothing each time I begin to cry, because, you know, I can't afford to do that. In this outfit. All right. There's only a couple more things I want to get to. Now, when it comes to, like, big acts of vandalism and stuff like that. Uh, I'm in favor of it symbolically, but against it because, like, I defer to the leaders in that community that we're trying to protect with our protesting. You know? Shouldn't we... Shouldn't we defer to the people we're trying to protect? I see a lot of white motherfucking hands swinging these sledgehammers and shit. That don't seem right. You know, what are you doing there? I don't know, I don't know. It's a whole movement about protecting a, 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 an endangered class because our society has this horrible relationship with this certain community. And we're, we, as good people of the fucking future, are trying to fucking slowly fix that. And like, we're running out of time to slowly fix it. We're trying to take drastic action. I think that's noble. But if you're going to one of these protests, and bless you, and check yourself before you go. Who are you in the protest? <laughs> Do you fucking look like this? Yo, then like, you sort of have an assigned role here, okay? Just saying. You can be a protector and an ally. Nobody has invited you to be a leader. This is me not trying to be a leader. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to be a servant.
These are frustration tears. Here's some pointers if you're a white dude, and you know, let's just be real about this. White dude, that's, that's, that's basically who I'm talking to. Dear white dude, go into the protest. Here's some notes from another white dude uh, that, you know, if I doesn't mind crying on the internet, so take it for what it's worth, but. Uh, if you're going to the protest, here's some notes. Uh, don't go there to like be an alpha male Don't go there to be a leader. Think of yourself as somebody going there to protect protesters by protesting with them. That's a good way to maybe think about it. Don't think of yourself as like some active ingredient gonna bring my sledgehammer and shit. Here's a, oh, you know, here's a fucking note. Maybe like if you got white hands, like don't bring tools of escalation. How about that shit? If you got white hands, maybe don't put a sledgehammer in it for the day and shit like that. There's just a note. Because like, when you escalate shit, that the Black Lives Matter movement will get associated with that, even if they didn't approve of that. Even Like we've seen videos of people begging them, please just stop doing that, that's not what we're asking for. Yo, that's what the fuck's up. And, um, Nobody likes to be told what to do, and I dig that. And like, you know, fucking, this is just a general friendly advice from the local idiot, but if you got white hands, don't bring tools of escalation to this event. Bring tools of like protection and uh, healing. Good idea. Um, you, you can still be for this community what the police wouldn't be. Protectors, servants. God damn it, it just seems so simple. So, I know it's a weird thing to talk about. It's a weird thing to watch uh, your favorite fucking little clown cry and shit, but Heavy shit. <sighs> Fuck. I would have bet that I would cry, but I would have hoped that I wouldn't. <clears throat> all right, fourth thing. Jesus, out of five things, it's not that many motherfucking things. I'm gonna get through them all. Number four thing. Um, there's a meme going around. It's, 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 uh, it's very powerful, and it says, uh, silence is violence. <laughs> and I, I, and with, uh, I, in my heart, agree. And, and I'd also like to be picky again about the wording. Just like we were before when we talked about violence being interchangeable somehow with vandalism. That's not right. That those aren't the same, right? So I'd also like to say like, Yo, silence, I wouldn't call that the same thing as violence. But I would say that if you're at this point in this, with this issue, if you're being silent, you are being complicit in violence. And here's how I think that works. It's like, um, it's like a, when oh, we'll all be voting soon. Hey, we'll all be voting soon. Um, when, when, uh, when we'll be voting, the, one of the things that all, you'll feel, all the strangers on the internet will be demanding of you and telling you is like, um, you have to vote a certain way. Um, now, uh, my friends, of course, will all say, and they'll be right, of course, that if, you, that if I don't vote, there's a very good chance that that is like giving a vote to the status quo, which in this case would be the Republican Party, Trump. Um, by not voting, you don't sway it toward the good anyway. You, you, you neutralize yourself. And that's how the fucking, um, and I'm, I'm not trying to equate the Republican Party with the darkness and shit. 
but I'm trying to show a likeness in, in the situations here. So I'm not, I'm not calling um, a, a certain a party evil or a certain party absolutely good. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is when you don't vote, the status quo wins. That's what the fuck I'm saying. Is that helpful? Throw away that analogy if it was confusing. I'm not trying to pick on your favorite thing, whatever. I'm trying to say if you neutralize yourself, the status quo will win. Because it's easier to let things stay than it is to change shit. And if you don't put your weight behind something, it's not gonna change. That's one of the reasons I'm making this long ass post today. Uh, because like I'm trying to throw my weight around it a little bit, as much as I have, and it's trying to be humble. I don't fucking know, but like trying to show where my heart is. We should all be doing that. We should all be showing where our hearts are. I'll bet we agree, really. I'll bet we really do agree that like really we want to love people. We think that's a virtue in our society we want to lean into. I think that's right. So then the next conversation is, what is the best way to love this community? Now that's a way more helpful conversation. If we could get there. Shaky, man, emotional. Oh, I shouldn't have tried with my left hand anyway. It's my shaky hand. Fuck. One more thing, okay? M maybe one of the more important things, except the very first thing I said, which was listen to somebody else. Um, but listen to this too, maybe. Um, I don't know anybody personally now, this is just my experience, but I know a lot of people. I don't know anybody that doesn't think love is a virtue. I don't know anybody like that. There, there's probably somebody out there with some kind of like, uh, <coughs> some kind of uh, mental uh, impairment, maybe. Or, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe somebody that, that can't perceive something. I'm not sure. Um, but I think on, on average, most people would say love is a virtue. There are obvious benefits to love. I think. So, if we think love is a virtue, and I think that we do. I think people believe that. If we're going to say we love people, we have to love all the people just seems so obvious. What does that mean? And boy, let me catch this again. I, I don't know. But I think when you love someone, it changes how you act. No. Oh my God, I'm gonna try and muscle through that cry, fuck. I think when you love someone, it changes how you act. Love makes you do things. It changes how you act. As a society, we haven't been showing that community that we love them. We have to change how we act. Just, God damn it, it's not so hard. It's not so hard. It's, I mean, like, it's more than laws. survive in the future, we have to love each other. Sorry. Tough. <laughs> Yo, that's why I said right at the top of the show is like, listen to somebody else on this topic, for sure. Because like, I have a very specific 
um, experience in the world. White male in America, yo. I don't even understand all the differences, truthfully. I know that I don't, and I try. <laughs> and man, I strive to equalize that. So. Oh, man. Yo, I do a show called The Hippie Report. <laughs> and it's because, like, in some ways, I'm just like an old-fashioned hippie, and I really do think peace and love, man. More like love and peace, because love creates peace. <laughs> and it's confusing, because English only has one word for love. That's fucked up. But we talk about that another time. I mean... If you're not offended at the idea that you're part of a culture that has to be reminded that oh, some of the lives matter. Oh, it's offensive, man. And they're right that we need reminding. I'm not offended when, like, a police station burns down. Nope. That's a symbol of the uh, fucking uh, aggressor, for sure. <laughs> I'm not offended, but, like, oh, it's a complicated world, and I trust the people in that community to make that decision. Hey, man, if you got white hands, don't start a fire. How about that? <laughs> Is that a good rule? It's sort of a weird racist thing, but, yeah, it felt like an, if you got some white hands... Don't escalate anything. That's not your job. <laughs> Just an opinion from the local idiot. But there it is, friends. Those are my five fucking things. What were they? I don't know. Listen to it again. It's probably a long video. Fuck me. <laughs> oh, man. Here's the punchline. I believe love really fixes it. But it's purposeful. It has to be on purpose, like a real relationship. We're in the information age. Everybody's going to find out everything. And uh, as more of the information pumps out all the time, um, we're trained to notice pain. <laughs> and I'm, I'm so glad that we as a society are waking up to the thing that the Black Lives Matter movement is trying to point at. And uh, boy, I just couldn't be more with it. All right, fuck. There, I did my thing. I fucking talked to the community about it. Man, I do it because I love you too. Oh man, I make my art on purpose. It's to help. In my little way, you know? Here's my little post. Yo, I'm gonna try and like back out of the spotlight again about it because like, you ought to be listening to other voices on this topic. Um, why don't you hear where I was? And I can't really um, make a Facebook post that has my uh, heart in it. Not really. And uh, I know I'm going to get attacked no matter what. I said I've maybe left out some important thing. That's why you should listen to someone else. But I know that somebody's going to blame me for not saying the right thing or saying the wrong thing. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, said what was on my heart. Um, I'm, 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 my heart's open about it. I'm trying to learn. But that's where I'm at, man. Uh, we're all responsible for where we're at. And that's mixed news. Because if we're all responsible for where we're at as a society, then that's true in the future. And if we all remain responsible and purposeful, then we can aim at a better place together. It just doesn't sound like that big of an ask, really. Body cameras. How about a body camera? How about like, oh Jesus. How about me not talking about some shit I'm not an expert in? Listen to somebody else on that. 
there's some really common sense changes to be made. And uh, boy, I'd, I'd recommend donating money uh, toward getting people out of jail that have been arrested at these protests. Um, there's plenty of uh, websites I can post uh, links to that. Um, anyway, I hope you have a thoughtful day. You know, I'll fucking get back to trying to make you laugh soon. Because <laughs> that's who I am too. But like, heavy day. Again. And again. See you next time.